Hey, do you like my Ryobi tool collection? Maybe my collection of broken tools, but we're going to fix them today on Dad It Yourself. Hey, before we get started, I want to talk about a couple of things. Um, if you're not comfortable working on mechanical items, electricity and stuff like that, then don't do this. Uh, go through the process with Ryobi or Home Depot and get your warranty items repaired. If they're out of warranty, well, you're probably out of luck. In most cases, because of the price point of Ryobi tools, you just buy another one. Uh, I'm a little bit more inclined to do some repair. Some of these parts are actually still in warranty. I just don't feel like going through the process. And some of them are actually out of warranty now, so I wasn't gonna get a replacement anyways. Uh, I started out the process by downloading the repair manuals from the Ryobi website and I'll provide a link to each one of these manuals and the overall website so you can go through that and see how these manuals are placed and how they're put together and such like that. They're really easy. If you've ever used a repair manual or you're in some kind of repair industry, you're going to be very familiar with how the uh, illustrated parts breakdown works and some of the wiring diagrams. Okay. So here is a group of Ryobi tools that I own. They are all broken. Uh, we'll get to these individually in a minute, but we've got an orbital sander right there, reciprocating saw, a palm router or trim router, the caulking gun, and the drill press. All right, so the first tool we're gonna work on today is this Ryobi P601 palm router and the problem I'm having is actually with the collet so let's go ahead and take this off slide that up to there push that little button down and off comes that and then turn this until it engages and I have it finger tight right now but I'll show you what my issue is so See how that sticks like that? And then let's see if we can get it all the way off. All right. So in here, and you may or may not be able to see that. I'll zoom in as best I can. Um, the shank of the router bit doesn't go all the way down into the collet. And what has happened to me in the past is while I'm routing, and no matter how hard I tighten the collet nut down, this bit starts sliding. And I had a project almost ruined because the bit slid down and gouged into the project. I was actually able to fix that by unfortunately routing deeper into the project. It wasn't ideal for what I needed, but it actually solved the problem. And this is a Ryobi bit and I will have a link to the bit set and all these tools as well as some of the other Ryobi tools I use in the description below. So my solution to this one was to get a new collet and a new collet nut. I think this one just had been crushed too many times and it just wasn't working anymore. And it, they kind of come as a set. Um, this one was pretty dinged up, so I got a new one of that too. So if you see this, uh, so this is the quarter inch shank side and this is the six millimeter side for you metric people. Um, this one goes in a lot nicer and seats all the way down to the bottom in that. So, and it comes out a lot easier. So we'll go ahead and put that on there. Put the collet back in there. So go ahead and put a battery in. And you'll see that it's going to be nice and steady and no vibration. Just the way I like it. That was a nice, easy fix on that tool. Okay, the next tool I have is the Ryobi P310G 18 volt caulking gun. Love this tool. As you can see, I've gotten a lot of use out of it. Uh, the one challenge is if you have this set, see how it's set to high or to low, if it's set too high and the opening in the caulk uh, tube is not big enough for the flow, it'll actually blow the tube out. And usually what that means is the plastic plunger in the back of the tube uh, fails and then all this stuff comes back 
into the plunger and then get sucked up into the shaft. And that's actually my problem. Um, this thing is frozen in place. I cannot move it in or out because there's so much caulking inside. So we're gonna go ahead and take this apart, clean that all out, put it all back together, and hopefully it'll work. Um, like I said earlier, we got the Illustrated Parts Breakdown. It shows how everything goes together. Really helpful on this. Screw right down in here. It holds the motor assembly to the other side. And then, um, oh, so there's another one right here. We have to take this board off to get to it. Just gonna open that board. See any other screws? It's all a little stud. There it goes. There. So here's my problem. Whatever it is, it's inside here. Okay. screws holding this motor in here. See that? Little planetary gears in there. Guess we're just gonna those come out? Nope, those will stay in there. Where are we at now? Can't seem to figure out how to get in here without getting this off. Oh, here it comes. Nope. This is definitely molded into one piece. There's no half either way. So right now what I'm dealing with is the friction between whatever this gear is. If I can get that out of there. I don't think I can get that out of there. It seems loose. That's on it. And that one will not come out for some reason. It must be friction fit onto this bearing right here. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's all dried caulking. That is not a gasket. Ugh. This is 
definitely the drive gear. So, let's see if I can clean some of this up first. Still really hard. You see a little bit of caulking down inside this planetary gear right here. So we gotta figure out how to get that out of there. Looks like that snap ring. Nope. this all the way through. There we go. Look at that. Oh my god. It just came pouring out of there. So off camera, I cleaned the rest of the caulking out of this as best I could using crud cutter caulk remover. I'll have a link to that if you're interested in it. It worked really good. Oh, got an extra one. wonder where that one went. Well, everything feels good. Get that in and out. Let's put a battery in it and see what happens. Let's see if I did this thing right. Here we go. Pull that and go. Oh, it's locked. Awesome. Okay, this is my P514 reciprocating saw. Um, use this one for demo. Uh, should have been using a 517 probably just based on the amount of work. But let me show you what it's doing. dead now. Well, it was giving me the blue smoke, so I mean, hopefully this is just going to be a straight uh, motor replacement. Got a new motor right here.
Ooh, smells burned. Okay. Got a little corrosion back here. That's okay. Everything else looks pretty good. There's no power board in here, so that's a good sign. Let's go ahead and see what we need to do to get this motor out. Looks like... these two screws out right here. Let's see if I can take these two screws out right down here. Holding this plate on, it'll give me some more play with these wires. Toasted. And to test it. Works like a champ. Okay, next item. Uh, P411 uh, orbital sander. This is my original one. Uh, bought in 2016. And this was the replacement uh, that I bought in 20. 19 so I've had this one for a year and I've had this one for about four years uh, They have equal 1.5 batteries in them kind of want to hear you See what they sound like. So this is the broken one and This is the good one You can also see from the rotation watch this one. This is a good one Nice rotation, nice oscillation. This one, not so much. Just kind of a little bit of rotation, but something's definitely wrong in there. So we're going to crack this one open now, and hopefully it's just a motor. All right, so I forgot two screws for some reason. Got those out of it. This thing will come apart now. Yep. It's amazing what happens when you take all the fasteners out. There's one side. Ooh. Yeah, look at that motor. Holy crap. You see that? That thing is charred. So there's the dead motor. Here's a good motor. Wow, I've got a bearing and a plate. 
let's get this thing uh, taken off of here. Probably we're going to have to unsolder it from the switch, it looks like. So, okay. Soldering iron. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Good as new. So here's my drill press, and you're probably wondering why the motor is right here and not back there. Well, a couple of weeks ago, this thing, as you can see, is not mounted to anything, and it took a little tumble down to there on the concrete floor and you can see crack the case and it bent this bracket here I tried to fix it I don't know if you can see that or not but it was not successful uh, so I ordered a new bracket and a new cover and I'm gonna install those and get everything put back together and get this drill press back in commission. So it's been a while since I took this thing apart so the order of it going back together is going to be a little bit difficult for me but thank god I do have my parts break down but what I do know is this lid has to come off because it's broken and it will provide me additional access to the other mechanical parts as I install those so I'm going to take this lid off first. So I had to fight with this bolt a little bit off camera. The uh, lid here, it doesn't come all the way up, so there's a long bolt to get in there. Uh, to take this off, I'd have to disassemble the whole chuck assembly, and that's just not worth it. So I finally got it in there. Yeah, let's get that tightened down.
there you have it. I fixed over a thousand dollars worth of tools for about a hundred dollars worth of parts. It was easy. I just downloaded the repair manuals, ordered OEM parts from the Ryobi website. They came in about a week and about two hours later, all these tools were fixed. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, put those down below in the comment section. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you do, hit the bell for notifications. I've got some videos over here you may be interested in. Subscribe button's right here. Thanks for watching. Dad it yourself.